All right, guys, so we are diving deep into this competitive scene here in Supercross, the game number four. I have officially battled with the best, the best 250 players in the game on PC. The 250 hero class, man. Round one of the 2021 DMR Championship in Supercross 4 took place last weekend. If you guys missed my recap video on the night of 450 racing, go check it out. It's up on the channel. In this video, I'm going to break down the 250 night of racing, give you guys a look at all of the chaos that went down from my perspective the 250 hero class it has that name for a reason the 250 shredders it is truly stacked the 250s race on the monday and we actually race on the same track that was picked for the 450 night of racing on the sunday so salt lake city round 17 was the round that was picked and i feel like i came into the night a little more prepared and a little more ready to battle with the best in the 250 class now you guys seem to be really enjoying these multiplayer videos so make sure to go down there and smash that thumbs up button for me if you haven't already i want to be putting out content that you guys are enjoying and like i said you guys seem to be really enjoying these multiplayer videos and that thumbs up button well interacting with the video in any way whether it's a comment clicking that subscribe button smashing the thumbs up button it helps me out a ton and it really really is a way for you guys to show some feedback on these videos the multiplayer videos are fun and the competitive multiplayer videos are they're a step up they are on a whole nother level we're gonna hop in and talk about my night of 250 racing that's enough babbling let's get on into talking about qualifying Okay, so once again, if any of you guys do actually want to get involved in this racing series on the PC side of Supercross 4, I will leave all of the information to get in to the DMR series down below in the description. The links and all the info will be down there for you guys to find if you want to get yourself into these races. So going into qualifying, of course, the top 24 times from qualifying move on into the heat races. I think there were about 37 signups or something like that, so some people were definitely not getting into that top 24. Now I knew I could get out there and hit some solid 54 second laps so that was literally my plan. Get out there, run some clean 54s and just try to get a time that gets me in that top 24. Qualifying session number one was low-key kind of just a disaster. I could not hit one clean lap for the life of me. Luckily I did manage to get out there and hit a 54.566 on lap one literally on lap one i hit this lap and the rest of my qualifying session was just garbage The goon moments truly came out to play for the rest of qualifying session number one. Like, it was just a disaster. With that 54.566 as a lap time coming out of qualifying session number one, I actually had a little bit of confidence just because looking at kind of the other times in my qualifying session, I saw obviously Xena and Weedy. They were down in like the 52 second range, so they were absolutely flying. And I knew there would be some people on that level, like Kimzen, he was in a different qualifying group, and I knew he was easily gonna hit a faster lap than me but i was still kind of in that top portion of my qualifying group so i had some confidence and i knew i just needed to back up that 54 second lap in qualifying session number two so in qualifying session two i was really just focused on consistency at that point i knew i could run the 54 second lap times i just needed to make it happen making it happen is exactly what i did i got out there and hit a 54.768 pretty early on in the qualifying session. I was okay with that, but I knew I could go quicker and I knew I could beat the lap time that I set in qualifying session number one, which was a 54.566. So I started to kind of pick things up in the end of qualifying session number two, and I actually ran a 54.565 and then a 54.564. If you guys want to talk about consistency, man, I don't even know how you could be more consistent than that. 54.566, 54.565, and a 54.564. That is nuts. That is true consistency. It was like the goon moments just did not exist in qualifying session number two. I got out there, put in some solid laps, and knew what I needed to do. And I needed to take that energy on into the heat race. And 
we're gonna talk about that. So that brings us to heat race time. It was time for my first 250 gate drop of the night where it actually counted. The top five from the heat race move on into the A main, straight on into the A main. Everybody else goes to that LCQ. So the goal would be to finish that heat race in the top five and move directly on into the A main. The LCQ is just way, way too risky. So once again, off the start, I tried to play it smart and I don't think it pays off when I try to play it smart off of the starts. The starting technique is something that I really need to work on. Starts are crucial, especially when everyone is fast in these lobbies, like starting position is key. So starts are definitely something I need to work on and I ended up kind of at the back of the pack at the start of the heat race. I ended up going down all on my own. It wasn't really anyone's fault. I was in the mix in the battle on the first lap trying to honestly avoid the first lap chaos and just keep it on two wheels and in the second rhythm section I just ended up going down all on my own trying to sweep my way into that third rhythm lane and yeah it costed me. When up over the bars, I kind of swapped, I don't know, it was a weird crash. At this point, I knew it was time to focus up and put in some clean laps. These heat races are super, super quick and there's not that much time to charge to the front of the field. I was locked in a battle in eighth place and I knew I had to be aggressive if I wanted to get up into that top five or have any shot at getting up into that top five. So then as that heat race was kind of closing out, coming to an end, the final laps were upon us and I was locked in a solid seventh place, just kind of lurking, lurking in seventh with a big old group of riders in front of me. I knew that transfer spot was up there. My eyes were on the prize. I was like, if I can just get up there into that group, I have a shot at getting into this A main. Top five, that is all I needed, two more passes. I think how it played out actually worked really good for me because the group in front of me were kind of battling back and forth, probably in full panic mode, knowing that they had that last transfer spot on the line. So they ended up banging bars and a few of those guys up in front of me made mistakes and that allowed me to catch up and kind of capitalize on their mistakes, putting me into a fifth place position on the last lap and I was locked into fifth place on that last lap. I knew I just needed to bring it home. I somehow had a terrible heat race at the start and managed to fight my way up into that top five so I just wanted to cross that finish line and get on into the A main and be done with the chaos. I didn't want to go to the LCQ. I had the potential to get into the A main right from the heat so I didn't want to make any goon mistakes on that last lap. I had flashbacks from my LCQ in the 450 class. I was like, man, if I loop my Larry right now or something, I'm getting passed and I'm losing this transfer spot. So brought it home in fifth place in that heat race. That means I got to avoid the LCQ and I got to kind of just chill until the main event. Now at this point in the night in between the heat race and the main event, I felt like the night kind of stalled out a little bit for me because going right from the heat race, I didn't have any LCQ action or anything like that. And then next thing you know, it was like, boom, main event time. Let's go. I was in time attack kind of goofing around doing some laps just to kind of, you know, stay in the zone, stay in the game. But that doesn't compare to actually racing against the best of the best. So when that main event gate drop came, it was nerve wracking. Like I, I felt like I was about to be thrown into war with some of the best Supercross riders in the game. Of course, the first lap chaos went down. It always goes down. If you don't get out front early on that first lap, I feel like the back of the pack is just true chaos on the first few laps. Somehow I ended up actually battling through the field pretty quick. A lot of people were making mistakes and flying off track every which way. So I knew if I just kept it on two wheels and stayed consistent, I would manage to actually work my way up through 
the field into a decent position. Somehow, someway, I ended up fighting my way all the way up to third place, and I actually ran there for a few laps. I ran in third place in this 250 main for, I think it was two laps total, and there was a wolf pack behind me, like a pack of riders on the hunt, and I definitely had that target on my back. It felt good to be up there in the top three, definitely gave me like a little bit of confidence, especially because I was literally in like last place two laps before that. It's the moments like that that start to kind of build your confidence and confidence is key. Confidence plays a huge, huge role in racing in my opinion. If you have the confidence to do good and the confidence to pull off good results, then you're gonna start getting those good results if that makes sense. So of course, Xena and Kimzen came up through the field and they came up pretty quick to try and get that pass in on me and move up into that podium. I was ready for a fight and we actually got locked into a three-way battle for a couple laps. Me, Xena, and Kimzen going back and forth. It was, uh, it was a pretty gnarly battle. Now me riding at that speed, I am pushing it to the limits. I am riding on that edge and I'm probably kind of overriding a little bit. 100% trying to push to keep up to their speed and that's when the mistakes started to happen. I ended up going down twice in one lap. So kind of midway through that main event, I kind of hit a little bit of an all time low. It was like a disaster lap. I was like doing really, really good. All of a sudden two crashes happened and I was back in seventh place. Silly mistakes too, like silly silly mistakes but it does show you that at this level if you make mistakes even one little crash two crashes those are super super costly and people are going to be there to capitalize on that they are going to capitalize on your mistakes so i fell back to seventh place which was actually eighth place because spud i believe spud got the timing glitch which is a weird bug where it'll say you're in last even though you're actually running like fifth or fourth or wherever you are in the field so i was technically locked in eighth place battling with the man big smoke and we had one of the gnarliest battles that I've had in the competitive scene so far. I would say that this battle lasted like two full laps if not longer and I could not get past Big Smoke. I was trying everything, I was locked behind him and I think I had the speed to get by 
by him, there just weren't that many like passing opportunities and I truly felt trapped just trailing Big Smoke for two laps. I kind of got to a point where I knew I needed to force the issue or else I was just going to get stuck behind Big Smoke for the rest of the race and locked into that position so I knew I needed to be aggressive and get that pass in the bag as quick as possible. I wasn't about to be any more patient than I already was so I don't know what it was but I came across that finish line, I got the pass in on Big Smoke and I went on to run my fastest lap of the whole entire night when I got that pass in the bag. So it was a pretty good lap at that point in the main event. Then going on from there, it was really all about just riding consistently and being smart for the rest of the race. I knew the top runners, the front guys were pretty far ahead and the odds of me catching up and passing any of them were pretty slim. So I was kind of just locked into seventh place, lurking behind Spud, managing to run some pretty decent laps and just kind of paced myself for the rest of that main. I didn't want to make any silly mistakes because I knew Big Smoke was behind me, he was lurking and if I went down, he was gonna be there to pass me. And I believe it was Pedrin who got up within the last few laps. He caught up to me, started applying some pressure, but then he made a mistake and that just gave me all the room in the world, all the room I needed to be smooth sailing to bring home a seventh place on the night. So all in all, it was a night filled with ups and downs, but I think it was overall a better night of racing when compared to the 450 class. 450 class was just complete chaos for me. I kind of turned things around here in the 250 class. I did make some mistakes. I had my goon moments, but it's about minimizing those goon moments and uh, managing to fight back in the heat race from last place. Got myself into that A main and then put in some solid laps in the A main, had some fun battling with the boys, and it's all about building that confidence. Confidence is key. So on the night, we had Weedy taking home the win, Hype in second place, and then Xena, who is actually the champion from last year in the 250 class, coming across the line in third. Kimzin coming across in fourth, McChicken in fifth, Spud in sixth, who got that time glitch, so he gets bumped on up on that leaderboard. Me, Pedrin, Big Smoke, L5, Hegs, and TKO Smokey to round out that A main. Pup to see Smokey out there, man. Getting involved in the community. He's doing a ton of streams and stuff for MX Bikes. He seems to be really active in the Moto Gaming community. So I gotta get some videos in the bag with Smokey. I feel like we could have some fun together. Now, just looking at the lap times in this A main, everybody is fast. If you make it to the A main, you are fast. I'm slowly starting to learn how important it is to avoid avoid making mistakes and just be consistent. At this level, crashes and mistakes are super, super costly. So just keeping it on two wheels is, man, it can be a big player in your outcome for these races. If you're crashing every two seconds, you are not getting good positions and that is just facts. I'm also starting to learn how to kind of be aggressive and ride on the edge. We got to find that limit and play within it. And I think I'm looking forward to the future round. It's gonna be a good season, a long 10 round season. The first round is in the bag and we got nine more rounds to go. So that is it for my recap on the 250 class round one of the 2021 DMR championship. A crazy night of racing from my perspective. I was kind of all over the place, had some ups, had some downs, but 
solid, solid night of racing in the bag. I'm looking forward to this weekend's races and hopefully, hopefully pull off some decent results. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash that thumbs up button for me. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here. Remember, oppose nothing, conquer everything, take on everything life throws at you and crush those goals. Check out the Once Company. The link is always down below in the description. That's it. That's all. Peace out.